I'm not really a guitarist, I just know a little bit how to play guitar and at some point of learning how to play guitar, I started using a guitar tuner. For musicians, for people that play music, this is just a normal thing, but for me that was a mystery box. I had no idea how it works internally, like how does it know how to tune guitar properly and normally when I have no idea how something works, I make it myself, I build it because I want to deeply understand everything about the device. So in this video I will make my very own guitar tuner with an Arduino. This is the final version of this project. It took me quite a lot of work. I designed my own Eagle Components library, I used for the first time the SMT stencil, I used for the first time the FFT, that is the fast Fourier transform. I learned a lot while making this simple project and I will show you the process of that. I hope you will enjoy it. I already spent three hours on drawing things for the animation and then I realized that probably spending three days on a minute of animation is probably not worth it. So in short, I'm using FFT to decompose the sound wave into separate frequencies. Most likely the loudest frequency will be the frequency of the string of the guitar. And that way I can calculate how to tune the guitar properly. If you want to know more about Fourier Transform, I will put a link to a great video by Free Blue One Brown. You can check it out and it will explain everything about Fourier Transform. So now we can talk about the prototype itself. I made it using the Groove Beginner Kit that Seed Studio sent to me. This is a really useful thing for prototypes and for starting out with Arduino because everything is already connected on this PCB. The program itself was kind of easy to make thanks to the Arduino library, FFT Arduino library. And right now I just have to design a PCB, but on PCB I am not going to use this screen because I just can't find a proper screen that will for sure work with my design, so I decided to go with LEDs and that's what I have to prototype right now, so I'll just add probably a breadboard with few LEDs to see if everything works fine. I already started designing the schematic like a few days ago, but it's not finished yet and before I will finish it I just literally have to add a few LEDs, like connect all of those 9 LEDs to the microcontroller, to the Atmega 328 right there, and also the button, and that's it, everything else is connected. And here I would like to tell you about something that I used in this project and something that is in my opinion very very useful. The board that I use, the Groove Beginner Kit that I have right there is actually open source, that means you can go to the Seed Studio website and download the schematic and PCB layout for this board. And that's very useful in my case because I have no idea how to design uh, such an amplifier circuit for the microphone. But fortunately I can take a look at the schematic of this exact board and I can take a look at this exact thing that is the amplifier circuit for the microphone. I can just copy it and the circuit is ready. Of course I designed my own footprint and the schematic symbol for the LM358DR. Alright, so enough for talking. Right now I will connect all the LEDs, buttons, everything, and I have to design the PCB. So, let's do it. After I finished the PCB design, I uploaded the Gerber files to JLC PCB, the sponsor of this video. Once your PCB design is ready, you can zip it and throw it at jlcpcb.com. JLCPCB is a very professional PCB manufacturer. You have a lot of different settings to choose from. You can choose different colors at no additional cost. You can choose PCB assembly. You can order SMT stencils, multi-layer PCBs. Everything is in there. You have a really nice Gerber viewer so that you can see if everything is okay with your Gerber files. And price for 5 PCBs 10 by 10 centimeters is only $2. If you need PCBs, definitely check out jlcpcb.com, link is in the description. After about a week, I got my order, but not only the PCBs, because I also ordered a stencil. I'm always trying, at least trying, to try something new in each video and to show you how it works and the results of 
my experiments. In this video I will try the SMT stencil for the PCBs. The stencil is a very thin piece of steel with holes in it and you can put this stencil on top of the PCB and then it is super easy to apply the soldering paste to all the parts at once. So if you want to assemble a lot of PCBs uh, at once, it is super easy to use the SMT stencil, at least that's what I heard. Here is my very simple rig. Just a few PCBs in here, old PCBs, because the height of them is the same as the new PCB. I can easily take in and out the PCB that I want to solder. And after putting the stencil down, the holes are already aligned and I use just a, a tape to attach it like so. Also, the PCBs are attached with tape. And then I just need to put a little bit of soldering paste on top of the stencil and with something straight, a credit card, piece of plastic, a ruler, whatever. I need to use it to spread the soldering paste on top of the stencil and after that the PCB is ready to put in place the components and solder that with hot air. I never liked applying solder paste by hand, but with stencil it is really easy, fast and precise. I did my best to put in proper places all resistors, capacitors and LEDs. After that just about 2 minutes with hotter and everything is soldered, at least all SMD components and on only one side. You can't use hotter to solder the other side because you would unsolder the first one. That's why you should put all the SMD components on one side, or at least try to. I am aware that solder joints that you will see in a moment are not perfect, far from perfect actually, uh, but I think there is something wrong with the solder paste that I used, it's quite old already, so I will try to buy a new one and hopefully that will improve in my future projects. There are also 4 THT components, the programmer connector, switch microphone and battery holder, uh, so I soldered that by hand and it looks really nice but you can't really see that here. But I can actually show you that under the microscope. You may recognize this thing from my first ever live stream where I unboxed this thing and just started playing with it. I recently used it for some of my projects for soldering and it is extremely, extremely helpful. You can clearly see what's going on on the PCB, if there are any shorts. You can even solder under this microscope. There are those small little pieces of solder that are not melted completely. And as I said, that's probably because this soldering paste is really, really old. Uh, here's the capacitor. Here we have LEDs with resistors. You can also see that it's not really that clean, but it should work fine. I mean, I don't see any shorts anywhere. Here is the button. On the other side, that's the side I soldered by hand. And as you can see, uh, the solder joints are a lot better right here because I use different solder. I also soldered a cable right here so that I can connect this thing to the oscilloscope. I wrote a very simple code just to test if LEDs and microcontroller circuit works properly and after that I connected the output of the microphone amplifier to the oscilloscope. Yeah, it works. All LEDs light up at once. That's, that's really cool. Here you have it. As you can see I use different colors for different things. LEDs work fine and also the microcontroller is most likely okay, that's cool. And now I will connect an oscilloscope to those two cables to see if actually the output from the operational amplifier and from the microphone is okay. That's what I see on the oscilloscope and as you can see, as I am speaking, this wave is going crazy. That's a good thing because, well, it's a microphone. And now to test it, I will play a 1 kHz sinusoidal tone from my phone and we should see 1 kHz on the oscilloscope, so let's try that. You can see almost a perfect square wave and you can see right there 1 kHz. It was time to modify the program that I used on my prototype. I changed some pin numbers, added a ukulele mode to tune the ukulele, there was a little bit of calibration that I had to do and of course some more testing. The question is, does it even work? Here is my guitar tuner and here is a pretty untuned guitar. Give me a minute and we'll know. The 
there are some problems with the low E string. Uh, probably the frequency is out of range of the microphone, which is most likely to happen. That's why professional guitar tuners usually use the piezo element instead of a normal standard electric microphone. Yeah, that works great, so the guitar mode is working. Now let's test the ukulele mode. So in order to enter the ukulele mode, I just have to hold this button for a bit and you see the four LEDs light up. That means we are in the ukulele mode because there are only four strings. I also made a small mistake on the PCB design. The switch for the battery was actually not connected properly. Fortunately, with just one jumper wire, it was easy to fix that. Stuff like this usually happens. This tuner consumes about 10 milliamps. So on this battery, you can power it for about 10 hours and you can even improve the battery life by changing the resistors for LEDs. LEDs consumes most of the current in this project. I used 500 ohm resistors for all LEDs and if you want to get a better battery life, but at the same time, slightly less brighter LEDs, you can use, for example, 600 or 700 ohm resistors for that. I designed a few PCBs in my life, but I definitely like this one the most. My own Eagle Components Library new technique of soldering, uh, some really cool stuff and a working guitar tuner. A really nice project. Even though it took me a lot of work, I think this video will not get a lot of views, but that's okay. I hope everyone watching and especially watching up to this point enjoyed the video. If you want to get the files, links, everything, you can find it in the description. Thanks for watching, happy making, bye.